The Conservative Party has been fighting over Europe for decades. Mr Chairman, you have invited me to speak on the subject of Britain and Europe. It has brought down three Tory Prime Ministers in a row and could yet a fourth. The issues at hand have morphed, but the fissures remain unaltered. Tuesday's vote is but the apotheosis of a 30-year civil war. It's rather like sending your opening batsmen to the crease, only for them to find, the moment the first balls are bowled, that their bats have been broken before the game by the team captain. <laughs> The question is, why? How did the party which took us into Europe not only infect itself with bitterness and bloodlust, but spread the contagion to the rest of us? And will it ever stop? The Tory party always had a Eurosceptic gene, but it was a minor one. For much of its modern history, it was keen on Europe and expanding access to continental markets. Towards the late 1980s, for some Tories, that began to change. The European Union was hell-bent on a course of ever closer union leading eventually uh, uh, to uh, a United States of Europe. So much that we were doing uh, was counter to what was going on on the continent. There, it was essentially de Regist. Um, and uh, here, we were trying to uh, deregulate. Margaret Thatcher herself agreed with Tebbit, lambasting the idea of a European superstate in her 1988 Bruges speech. But perhaps these nascent divisions would never have become as wide nor as fateful had this talismanic Tory not been deposed in the way she was. It was all because of the fall of Margaret Thatcher. It was a traumatic reaction to that. Various discontented, hard line, right wing elements in the party were deeply uh, annoyed uh, that she had fallen from power. Uh, and it gave them fresh impetus to moving the party into uh, an anti-internationalist, uh, anti-European attitude. Suddenly, to be a Eurosceptic was to be a Thatcherite, to embrace her vision of Britain and to fight for it after she'd gone, made worse after the ERM debacle. We're still living with that. The labels have changed, but the division is the same. From John Major onwards, Tory Prime Ministers have attempted to bridge that divide by splitting the difference. It has seldom worked for long. One of his critics once said that uh, he, uh, like a cushion, always bore the imprint of the last person that had sat on him. They didn't want to upset their right-wing colleagues by sounding as though they thought there were benefits in the European Union. But maybe Tory leaders were working with what they had because of a bigger problem, connected to, but bigger than, the party's European issue. The last time the Conservative Party won a decent majority was when Margaret Thatcher was waving at that window on election night in 1987. And perhaps that gives us a better way of understanding Brexit and the Civil War. It is the culmination of 30 years' worth of Conservative Party underperformance in the country at general elections. Tory Prime Ministers would never be so beholden to their Eurosceptic rump if they'd won decent majorities. Since the fall of Margaret Thatcher, Conservatism has been undergoing an identity crisis. That 30-year crisis has thrown up two different Conservative parties, both with different understandings of Britain's place in the world, both with different ideas about how a party with a nation at its heart responds to a world where the nation-state has never seemed less important. But with the vote tomorrow, can the wounds of this civil war at last begin to heal? I believe the Conservative Party will heal. It's, uh, the Conservative Party is a party of very considerable uh, resilience. Uh, and it's healed many times in the past. We face years of this until the Conservatives actually do somehow pull themselves together or some group is found that will establish a consensus and a majority, some grown-up way of proceeding. The Civil War will not be ended for some years. Um, if, as I believe, uh, we leave with a clean break and we then begin to build our country up again, we begin to run our own affairs again, um, and that is successful, and I believe it can be successful, and then uh, I think the party will heal. How do you think historians will rate the Conservative Party's performance over this period? If we were to leave Europe, I think they will be very unkind. They will talk of a nation, one of the greatest empires the world has ever seen, Overwhelmed by newly emerging forces, a nation clinging on to memories of a power structure quite 
uh, impossible to replicate without a vision as to how to build on the incredible strengths that made us what we were into a force relevant in the 21st century. And they will, they will be scathing. The Conservative Party has governed us for 75 of the last 119 years. Its ability to agree is of paramount importance to the nation, for until they can reconcile this great European question, 